take the roll, please. Berglund? Yes. Smaller? Yes. Molly? Yes. Shot? Yes. Fine? Yes. Okay. The consent agenda. All items under the consent agenda are approval meeting agenda. Uh, approval of the meeting agenda. Thank you. I make the motion we approve the meeting agenda. I'll second that. Oh, what? Call well, I thought you joined it. I got to do everything. Okay, yeah, call I'll the roll. roll. <laughs> Get on. <laughs> yes. 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 Shot. Yes. Yes. Okay. Now the consent agenda. All items under the consent agenda are considered to be routine by the city council and will be enacted by one motion with no separate discussion of these items. Item A, minutes of the May 15th, 2023 regular city council meeting. Item B, payments for contract services. Bolton and Mink wastewater design, $26,995.10. First children, second and third installments for the child care market study, and that should be first children finance, I believe, $10,000. Total contract services payments, $36,494. Claims register and financials, $1,426,821.69. D, licenses and permits, Perry Chamber of Commerce, 1124 Willis Avenue, New five-day special Class C retail alcohol license, effective July 20th, 2023. This is for the Second Street block party on the, on Second Street between Warford Street and Lucinda Street on Friday, July 21st, 2023. Casey's Marketing Company, doing business as Casey's General Store number 26, 2617 Willis Avenue, Renewal of a Class E retail alcohol license and ownership update due to changes in the Board of Directors. Quick Trip Incorporated doing business as Quick Star number 1180. Renewal of a Class E retail alcohol license. The police and fire inspections have been completed and are on file at City Hall. I make a motion that we pass the consent agenda. I'll second it. Call the roll, please. Wally? Yes. Klein? Yes. Berkeley? Yes. Smaller? Yes. Shot? Yes. Okay, city administrator's report. All right, I have a few things. I'll start off with my least favorite on my list, and uh, everybody should have gotten an email from Mr. Daniel Van Holland that he has accepted a job up in Minnesota and will be leaving us. So um, definitely sad to see him go, um, but definitely wanna extend our appreciation uh, for everything he's done uh, for the city and the community in his time here and wish him the very best on his new adventure up north. We expect he has an accent the next time he comes to see us, right? Um, uh, with projects, uh, most of our projects have pay requests or something going, so we'll kind of leave project updates for each of those. Um, did want to just give a quick heads up um, that we have been having conversations with Red Lion Renewables. Um, USDA has grant programs for renewable energy, and um, we're looking at the possibility at our next meeting of having uh, another power purchase agreement with them, uh, only if we would be successful in a grant application for the wastewater treatment plant. So we're gonna be putting more information together for that and uh, bringing that forward to you folks uh, at the next meeting. So more solar. And that's about all I have. Any questions for me? Mayor right. Council comments. Everybody's content and happy. Okay, good. Public hearing or open forums. 
Speaker will, will be asked to step up to the microphone and state their name and address for the record. Individuals speaking will be given three minutes to address the council. Hi, I thought I'd bring you some entertainment tonight. Um, we took, or I should say, Mindy took over 600 pictures on Saturday and she put together something today um, just to show you some of the joy that was had on Saturday. Yeah, it was crazy. We estimate probably between 750 and 800 people. Yeah. I was showing these to my husband and I said, David was there with the chess sets and there were people playing chess. <laughs> There's Misty. Yeah. <laughs> to Neil Perez from the elementary school. She does the photography and family photos and she donates all of her time. Oh yeah. The firefighters um, served 570 meals. Wow. Raccoon River, Val Raccoon Valley radio was there and, and uh, broadcast the whole time. This Jenga creation, these two boys, um, created it and then slowly destroyed it by pushing it over. We have a reel that's going to be on the website and the Facebook page. Those are great. Very cool. Very It was heavily attended. Public hearings. Yeah. Hold it for I'm sorry. No. Yes. <laughs> Lindsay with the Perry Chamber, 1124 Willis Avenue. Um, thanks for approving our liquor license for the Second Street Block Party. The band is Toaster this year, um, so looking for another great turnout. It is a fundraiser for the chamber, so um, dollars at the door and uh, selling beverages. Um, also, we just launched a new shop local promotion, um, so for the full month of June, we are going to have a little fun with a Monopoly themed game, Periopoly, so you can shop and dine locally, you can donate and volunteer to community organizations, and then share pictures like the Kids Fest with hashtag Periopoly for a chance to win gift cards from participating businesses. So just sharing information about that and supporting our area businesses. So that's all I got tonight. Anybody else? Thank you. I thank ladies and gentlemen for being very, very helpful. I appreciate their service. My name is Keith Nichols. I live at 1902 Fourth Street here in Perry. I've lived here for 30, 23 years. Last month, a petition was presented to this council asking for a change in city fireworks ordinance. The, the petition had 549 signatures. 549 adults of voting age put their names on the line asking for a change in this ordinance. I am here tonight to ask the council to consider suspending the enforcement of the current ordinance until a new one can be drafted. The proposal called for uh, use of fireworks on July 2nd, 3rd, and 4th between 7 and 10. This allow people more time to enjoy fireworks and also make a vague attempt to try and respect bedtimes. Last time we had in this town, I'd get up at 4 o'clock in the morning, go to work. I didn't like having them go off, but I understand people enjoy it. So it also put Perry Moore in line with our neighboring communities. On July 4th, 2021, use of fireworks is allowed in Perry. In my block, there are 22 houses. Of these 22 homes, eight of us were shooting fireworks that night. Two of my neighbors that were not shooting were outside enjoying a neighborhood display. Basically, what we had here is a 50% neighborhood participation rate. And it was fun watching the neighbors, watching what the neighbors were shooting. I ran out about 9.50, so I stayed and watched the neighborhood displays. And I was really impressed. All over town, in every direction, fireworks going off is a great show for I thought for once maybe Jake Chapman finally got something right. I don't generally don't agree with much of what Jake Chapman has to say. 
But it was a great show and people in town were having fun and I don't see what is wrong with that. Then the complainers and exaggerators started to call. Some people love and live just to complain and stir up problems. We have a petition with 549 signatures. That's basically one third of the vote in the last gubernatorial election in this town. How many exaggerators and complainers did you hear from? 50, maybe 100? But at most, nowhere near 500. And our petition has over 500 signatures. 500 signatures is a pretty impressive number. That's 57 more signatures than votes that John Andop got in the last election. That is 69 more signatures than votes that Vicki Klein got in the same election. The citizens of this town are speaking. I'm here to ask you to hear a request and suspend the ordinance and draft a new one. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Public hearings. Public hearing on proposed contract documents and estimated cost for the Weiss Park improvement. The City Council will consider the plans, specifications, proposed form of contract, and estimated total cost for the improvement, the same as being on file in the office of the City Clerk, reference to which is made for a more detailed and complete description of the proposed improvements. The City Council will also receive and consider any objections to said plans, specifications, estimate of cost, and form of contract made by any interested party on the Weiss Park improvements, which includes approximately 300 square yards of four inch PCC pavement, 85 LF, Linear feet. Linear feet, thank you. A four inch storm sewer, 68 linear feet of trench drain and other associated work under the improvement. Do I have a motion, please? Uh, no nope. public hearing. Public hearing, yep. nothing. Started. Opens at 611. Start at 611. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So we ended up receiving three bids for this project um, is for the Weiss Park improvements to be the west half um, of that park playground. So we got three responsive bids, came in about 34%, but they were all very good and competitive bids. It was some, a few, a few items were off that they were three times, give or take here and there, which was unique. Um, but after talking to them, it sounds like a lot of the, the bidders were looking for filler work you're just getting in here to get it done so I got a question why was this bid earlier got how many people need to bid so it was started earlier on what we were trying to do is secure additional funds seeing what that original estimate was um so just the timing of getting everything pulled together i know we got additional rotary funds um talking with the um Weiss and such so we did pull in additional there um john Pulling together some great grants with um, the foundry. But no, there are still some, yeah. there, are, there are still a um, few grants out there at the moment that the program is waiting to receive. One of them is uh, Prairie Meadows, I think, and it was for $20,000. If we get that, we'll know if we get the June or the July. So if we do get that grant, then we'll cover that extra. I've got one more question. You just had three respond. Did you give this to 30 companies to bid, or did you just give it to us? Yep, we gave it out to everybody on Quest. We did reach out to probably five or six additional. Mm -hmm. um, so, trying to get as much interest in it as we could. Um, the season and weather is being plentiful for contractors right now. Yeah, I personally was hitting up Dave and Lester aggressively. He had the time to do it. I think Dave said he was booked until October. So yeah. it would be nice to get it done. Yep. All right, we're closed at 614.
Then we move on to item seven, old business. Resolution approving the award for the Weiss Park improvements. Bids were received at 2 p.m. on May 31st, 2023 for the Weiss Park improvements. The engineer's estimate for base bid of the project was $42,290. Three bids were received. All bidders were responsive and bids for base bid are summarized as follows. Concrete Professionals, Altoona, Iowa, $60,006. Caliber Concrete LLC, Adair, Iowa, $60,371.79. Concrete Connection LLC, Johnston, Iowa, $83,000. The bid received from Concrete Professionals was 34.63% above the engineer's estimate for the project and was determined to be the lowest responsive, responsible bidder. Bolton and Mink Inc. reviewed the bid documents submitted and checked references on this bidder and was satisfied with the responses given. Bolton and Mink recommends award of the Weiss Park improvements to concrete professionals for the bid amount of $60,006. This resolution would award the bid as presented. Comments? We make the motion to pass resolution approving the award of the Weiss Park improvements. I'll second that. Call the roll, please. Kirkland? Yes. Wally? Yes. Smaller? Yes. Shot? Yes. Fine? Yes. Okay, item B, tabled resolution approving a local match and application submittal for the U.S. Department of Transportation charging and full infrastructure discretionary grant. The U.S. Department of Transportation, USDOT, announced the charging and fueling infrastructure discretionary grant program, CFI program, to strategically deploy publicly accessible electric vehicle charging an alternative fueling infrastructure in the places people live and work, urban and rural areas alike, and along designated alternate fuel cor corridors. This, this action item was tabled at the May 15th regular city council meeting due to the application deadline being extended and in order for additional planning and specification to be completed for the application. This program aligns with the city of Perry's sustainability goals while providing electric vehicle charging stations strategically placed throughout the community at the Iowa Street Wetland, the Quarry Community Building, Trailhead Parking Lot adjacent to City Hall, and with an optional site at the city-owned parking lot at First and Warford. The CFI program has a minimum award amount of $500,000 with a maximum award amount of $15 million. The program requires a 20% cost share of the total project cost and will not consider previously incurred costs. This resolution would approve the drafted application with locations and project costs not to exceed $3 million with a local match of 20% in eligible costs not to exceed $600,000 over a five-year period. The drafted application is subject to be revised according to grant specifications. However, the provided costs and site locations once approved will not. Motion, discussion. I make a motion that we pass a resolution approving a local match and application submittal for the US DOT charging and full infrastructure discretionary grant. And I will can, second that. Can we discuss this a little bit first? Sure. Um, $600,000 our cost is a hell of a lot of money for electric cars and, you know, that's future, but I don't see us. What's that going to be payback? So that's part of this grant is being able to utilize some of the project costs that, again, we haven't spent yet. Um, so some of the grading work out at Iowa Street will be eligible to count towards our match. Um, the work 
at uh, First and Warford parking lot as an option. The work we're already doing there uh, is hopefully a part of that. Um, but then a big part of it is utilizing the buyout of the solar uh, facilities at the parking lot and um, at the McCurry Center is kind of a uh, doubling down. And again, this is the maximum grant. It can be pared down. It did change because um, what was that? Last week, I think we discovered that um, each site that we propose has to have two chargers. So that increased our costs. So we're really probably looking more around that $500,000. But again, with a lot of that match being match that we're already going to be spending. So that's kind of my biggest goal there. Plus, and it's impossible to say what that revenue will look like. Uh, but these, we do charge to use these chargers. So that revenue can also go back to help pay for them. Not saying it's going to make 600 knock on wood, uh, but the the intent and the conversation is to then to leverage these other grants and other uh, projects that we've been doing to cover some of this match. I'm... I, I might be a little old for for this. I I I would think maybe put in one of these double charging stations to see how it works before we stick out eight or nine and spend a huge amount of money. You know, there's a lot of things we still can use in town. Am I backwards on this? I don't see a lot of electric cars on the roads yet. I know that it probably are more than you think, but and we can start putting them in, and then we're going to not get anything back. Well, yeah, I mean, Quick Start did not put any in. Um, I would have thought they would have. Um, and then um, again, like this can be scalable to. Um, do one side or two side as long as we hit that minimum of the five hundred thousand, which would be a hundred thousand dollar match. So, um, if there's priority, I think our first highest priority site would be the Trailhead parking lot, uh, kind of as a center point for downtown. Um, but it's a big unknown if there will ever be this opportunity to get the funds to pay for the chargers again. So, um, you know, the McCurry Center was a, another large uh, or high priority due to the amount of outside traffic that we get, not only just on a daily basis of the users there, but then also for the tournaments they have and things like that, so. So could we scale, scale this back from one set or two sets and scale it? As long as it hits yeah. the $500,000 minimum, yeah. I'm, I would be, as far as internal combustion engines go, we both like those things. Uh, but I also, uh, I believe that this is the trend. I think I read someplace last week that like 2030 or 35, most major car manufacturers are going to be eliminating so this is a right step for the future for sure it is like that and i don't know about gas stations i know that i have not seen a lot of IVs are doing some of those uh i have not seen anywhere else really as far as mm -hmm. chain operations go um it is long but it's over a five-year period which uh lessens the sting a little bit and if we can use some of that towards the projects that are already happening these would be implemented in. I think that, that makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. um, I do have a question for like the Mercury Center and our parking lot here. Can we get like do we get batteries that run off of our solar? Can we store that solar and then charge back or the free energy that we got? Is that a thing? So with our solar installations, we have net metering. So when we overproduce, our meter essentially spins backwards. And then as we use it, the meter spins forwards. So, so that, that for these meters too. Yep. These charging stations. Yep. 
So we wouldn't see its next cost of the same. Correct. And that's, you know, another large uh, point with this is, uh, especially the McCurry Center and City Hall parking lot will be tied into renewable energy to power the charging stations. So, um, you know, Iowa Street wetland is maybe the one I would look at uh, first to uh, pare down. Um, so if we vote on this, is it okay to have all done? Or can we scale right now and have well, we, I mean, we could, you could vote by you want to approve the like City Hall and McCurry Center sites or City Hall, McCurry and Tin Pig sites or whatever, as long as it hits that 500,000. And I had it up here. Oh, did you guys fix them? So the only thing I see is if we're talking about, like, I like the wetlands, well, McCurry Center and I guess the trailhead and the parking lot seem a little redundant. I feel like we could probably mix one of those two, right? And they're, we're talking about a difference of 100 yards. Right. And that was really to, you know, have a density downtown for people coming to the downtown to shop or eat or stay at the hotel, things like that. Yeah, that's a hard decision to make. Yeah. You have the new food source system over here, but there's also a change in the parking lot first of all from too. So where do you put the beans? Yeah. And those in those improvements at first and Warford would likely count towards the cost share. Um so it's that's this patch of gray right over here. <laughs> um yeah. So yeah, it's definitely a bigger grant for us, but one that has some strategy to it and kind of a big question mark of if, um, and I think this is the one that had to go through, Matt and Jacob will stare at me. This is the one that had to go federally because the state did not accept the federal funds. Right. So, so other states took the money and did it as a state. So yes. even if we approve this, what is our possibility of getting these grant monies? <laughs> we'll call Matt Ferrier to the witness stand. I'm throw this out here for this because <clears throat> our funding department worked pretty hard on this one. Some of the grumblings I'm hearing is that the time frame to prepare it was really short. So the feds extended the time frame. I still have heard several communities who are interested in it but could not get the necessary paperwork together in the time frame because it's a lot of work. Yeah. put it together sure. um, so i would anticipate it's i think it's gonna be around for five years is what i've heard um <clears throat> there's gonna be several more apply for it in the coming years versus this year's is what i'm hearing even as we talk to the mpo they've done an application for communities within the metro area um not very many went in with them on it just from the standpoint that they weren't prepared for it and that's that's kind of a, a little bit of a thing that's happening a lot with these federal grants they're coming out very fast and their, their submittals are coming pretty quick and there's not a lot of rules to them when they come out. So you're kind of learning as we're putting it together. Um, so I, I think, you know, I can't, I'd say don't quote me on this, but the odds are probably higher this year than it would be the following year. That being said, another common thing that seems like it happens with the, the federal grants is you'll apply the first year and don't get it. You reapply the second year and your success rate goes up. So to say we've got a high high probability, I, I don't know, but I think I feel like in general, if you're going to pick a year to go after it, this is probably the year. So, well, I don't think there's any doubt about it that it's the coming thing to have electric assist at least. You know, I, my son has a car that has an engine, gas engine, and electricity. You know, and and I and I, I just think more and more it's going to happen. And I, I understand the discussions concerns, but uh, I guess I just think there's going to be too many. I'd like to try to, if let's say mm -hmm. pick three, if we apply a sample, if we apply for the full grant, the three million, do we, we don't have to use all that, right? We can pair it back at our discretion. Okay. So we don't have to make a decision about what exactly is going to happen tonight. We're just making a decision about if we're going to send this grant out, right? 
Okay. More of a not to exceed local match. And if we got the reason, if we get these grants, we have something else in this panel. So, yeah. So, again, it comes down to what's allowed for that match from projects that we're doing. And then it's, uh, you have to spend the match over five years. So we would have five years to, once we know we got the grant, we would be able to budget part numbers in a future year or um, use fund balance or, or whatever. Can, can I ask one more question? Budget in the future is what Susie wants to hear me say. Do we have this in how many of the current projects that this coincides with that that dollar number would be applicable? As far as the match dollar amount? Yes. Um, I think that's what we were working on like Friday last week. Yes. You don't want to do that? That's significant. If it's two thirds, I mean, that's that's significant. That makes it pretty easy. To say. Yeah. And one of these days, we as a city council will be looking at probably some of our departments having electric cars. Mm -hmm. I know Eric is on me every day to get an electric police car. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> And just to confirm, the resolution is written as it's been said not to exceed. exceed. Not to exceed. Not to exceed 600,000 over a five year period and not to exceed the 3 million. And that 3 million included, go to exhibit A, that would have um, included all four of the projects. Would have included the wetland, the McCrary building, the trailhead, and then the optional one that they refer to as the tin pig, but is the and parking lot. Building. How I sort of understand the application is that you can rank um, the sites as like priority one sites and priority two, and I don't. I don't know if Matt knows, but I don't know if that's ranking it for them to choose which priority gets funded this round, or if we would get funded priority one locations this round and be able to go back in the future. Do you know? Call Maddie quick. She won't. No. Um, so that's part of it, too, is they want you to rank kind of that priority within the application. So. So it could be that we apply for four and get two, and they say come back in another couple of years or what have you. So I think it does have a significant on probably most of our uh, surrounding communities, especially moving west. Yeah. Um, and I, I do believe that this is going to be the future version of all of major carbon. I don't think there's any doubt. Yeah. It's going to make our car more valuable in the future. So, yeah, I, I, I enjoy it. So, we, if we get this the full money, we've got 125000 we can spare every year for the next six years to pay for this. Well, you take it out of whatever project costs, you would take that two thirds out of, probably take the rest out of local option sales tax. So, so far, we're going to do it we just wouldn't buy some mowers for John for a couple of years. <laughs> <laughs> Ready? Call the roll, please. Oh, we did get a second. Did we? Yeah, yeah. Yep. Second. Oh, okay. yep. Wally? Yes. Smaller? Yes. Berkeley? Yes. Shot? Yes. Fine. Yes. Okay, item C, approval of pay application number 24 for the wastewater treatment facility improvements. 
pay application number 24 in the amount of $736,588.14 to Woodruff Construction is for the construction of the wastewater treatment facility improvements. To date, total payments requested by the contractor are 77.7% .7 of the total amount of work to be completed under the contract. All documents have been reviewed and signed by the engineer and are recommended for approval. I make a motion to approve pay application number 24 for the wastewater treatment facility improvements. I'll second that. Okay, so um, things are going really good out there. They had a meeting last week that they are um, met with the contractors trying to pin down the exact dates or when the equipment can be here so they can have a final completion date schedule set. Um, they're still working on that is what Matt had told me. I think that was last Thursday. So um, big thing that they're doing out there now was trying to do some outside work. They're doing, they're still doing electrical and stuff inside, but started getting like grading and stuff done so they can do some concrete work um, on the outsides, but then we get the rain. So, um, so it's, a mess. it's a mess out there. We need to get some uh, some internal projects done with AccuJet, and it's just too wet to to do that. So sure, it'll dry up. We got some much needed rain. So I mean, some people are happy. Those guys are probably not as much, but I think everything's going good. Matt, do you have anything to add at all? Or yeah. So. Fine. Yes. Berkland. Yes. Waller. Yes. Wally. Yes. Shot. Yes. The item D, approval of pay application number six for the 2020 downtown street and utility improvements projects. Pay application number six in the amount of $871,207.20 to Crow River Construction for work completed on Bateman Avenue has been received. The pay application was signed by the engineer and is recommended for approval. I make a motion we pass uh, approval of pay application number six for the 2020 downtown street and utility improvements project. I'll second. Yep, so as you'll see out there, they've gotten quite a bit of pavement done. Um, they got third, they're getting wrapped up today. They got half and fourth up to Rawson. You'll notice that the Weiss trucks are now funneling down Bateman versus the detour. So we're getting better traffic in there for semi deliveries and stuff like that. Um, recently this week, they shifted utility work to the north end of 4th and Rawson. Now that the pavement's up and running, that they can shift the detours. Um, so we're seeing good progress out there with uh, completion coming up pretty quick. So, yeah, how much longer before they're finished? Hopefully before uh, July 1. Awesome. <laughs> that's their goal, and that's our goal. Love it. Um, big sidewalk, too. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so they're focusing on the roadways right now, and then they're going to be infilling the sidewalks and doing all the black dirt and seating right behind it. That's great. And just to go off your comment, there we are trying to figure out the route and funding source to get that trail complete from 4th Street to 8th Street. Uh, to hook into the high trestle trail. So yeah. um, that's going to be kind of a grant search for us here in the coming months and hopefully not years, but soonish. <laughs> <laughs> so, mm -hmm. Yeah, what you've got out there for sidewalk yeah. is wonderful. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> but I did it. Yep. <laughs> so oh, really? <laughs> Perfect. They call the roll. Wally? Yes. Smaller. Yes. Parkland? Yes. 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 Item E, approval of pay application number two for the First Street CIPP lining. Pay application number two in the amount of $148,335.90 to Institute Forms Technologies, Inc. for completed CIPP lining through May 15th, 2023, has been received and signed by the engineer, which recommends approval. Make a motion we approve pay application number two for the first street SIP lining. I'll second that. Yep, so as you'll see on this project, all the traffic cones down First Street have uh, been removed. 
they did get all the lining completed. There was one area that we're looking into a little bit closer, just the video that they took, they didn't stop and pan to it. So before we get things closed out, we want to get a closer still image of it. So they're going to come back to do that. Um, but we're, we're pretty confident everything's fine. It's just, it looked weird on the video. Um, once they get that verified, we'll get this one closed out and done. Everything went really smooth. They actually completed it in three days versus six days. So yeah, yep. they banged it right through. Yep, mm -hmm. they did work. Other comments or questions? Mahler? Yes. Swalling? Yes. Bertland? Yes. 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 Item F, approval of pay application number one for the runway 14 slash 32 relocation phase three. Pay application number one in the amount of $62,090.43 to Manats Inc. for completed work on phase three of the runway re relocation has been received and signed by the engineer, which recommends approval. Make the motion to pass approval of the pay application number one for the runway 1432nd relocation phase three. I'll second. So a little refresher, if we remember this one, it seems like it's been going a long time. <laughs> um, phase one of the project was grading for the new runway that's a 4,000 foot runway. Phase two was paving of 4,000 foot runway. Phase three was the long awaited extension portion of the, of the new project. So it adds another 1,500 feet of runway and brings our airport up to another level of service around the area. Um, Phase three has been a long time coming from the standpoint we've got to work through some wetlands. We've got road coordination things we have to do with Dallas County. We are meeting with them tomorrow to talk about those next steps. As it's starting to look like our wetlands will get resolved here in the next month, which means we can fully go into the rest of construction on phase three. Uh, with the overarching goal of by July 1st, we're starting to get ready to pave 5,500 feet of them up there. So if all those stars line up and everybody is on board, that's what we're keeping our fingers crossed. We're kind of at that that finish line right now with this project. So uh, that's what the start of this this work was. It's actually doing grading work outside of the footprint of the wetlands and outside of the footprint of Dallas County's 150th Street that is in that area. So. Great. Parkland? Yes. Line? Yes. Smaller? Yes. Walling? Yes. Shot. Yes. Item G, resolution accepting and authorizing signatures on necessary agreements and forms for the Community Development Block Grant Upper Story Housing Conversion Grant Contract, 23-HSGU-004. The City of Perry accepted a Community Development Block Grant Upper Story Housing Conversion Grant for resolution 041723B for a conversion taking place at the property located at 1306 Second Street, a property owned by Nudgers Kearns Managers LLC. This resolution would authorize mayor to sign on behalf of the city, the following items in conjunction with contract 23-HSGU-004. Certification of Compliance, CDBG Procurement Standards, Acknowledgement of Environmental Review Requirements, and Authorized Signature Form. Make a motion to pass a resolution accepting and authorizing signatures on necessary agreements and forms for the Community Development Block Grant Upper Story Housing Conversion Grant Contract 23-HSGU-004. I'll second that. Discussion? Smaller? Yes. Wally? Yes. Berkeley? Yes. Shot? Yes. Fine. Yes. Item H, resolution approving loan guarantee with Raccoon Valley Bank for Nudgers Kearns Managers LLC. For resolution of 041723A, the City Council approved credit support to the Nudgers Kearns Managers LLC for financing of their project consisting of remodeling and improving their building located at 1314 Second Street. The original loan guarantee originated in 2014 and was for 
about $750,000. The original loan guarantee was replaced by another guarantee in 2016 for $500,000, which was then again replaced in 2018 for $350,000. The city published notice and held a public hearing on the proposal to enter into another loan guarantee agreement in a principal amount not to exceed $350,000 in ongoing support of the project. Such loan guarantee has been prepared by Raccoon Valley Bank and is ready for approval. With approval, this record with approval of this resolution, it would authorize the mayor and our city administrator to enter into a new loan guarantee for the Nudgers Kearns Managers LLC in an amount of $350,000, subject to the signing of a loan guarantee agreement between the city and Nudgers Kearns Managers LLC. Discussion. So, this is what we have been talking about for some time. Um, and uh, I think you need a motion to make a second. Oh, discussion. Sorry, sorry. I'll make a motion to approve resolution approving loan guarantee with Raccoon Valley Bank for Nudger's Current Manager's LLC. I'll second. I got excited. I apologize. I got the card, <laughs> I got the card before the horse. So. <laughs> um, so We've been going through this for a little while, finally got the guarantee document from Raccoon Valley Bank, uh, got that through legal and uh, ready for approval of the official guarantee document. So. We don't have a resolution on it though, because the resolution that was drafted has the loan guarantee. We'll just do both. Yep. So there will be, there are two action items on the agenda, but how the bond attorney wrote them, they wrote them together. So you'll see two action items, but there's actually only one resolution, which got sent out at the 11th hour. <laughs> <laughs> so item number I is also part of this. Let's get them on H, H and I. H and I, you guys can, we can vote, vote, on vote, together. vote on them together, but Everybody understand there won't be two separate resolutions. They are they are attacked in this one. Okay. There is one. There is one. <laughs> okay, so you want me to go on to resolution I? No, let's no, vote yeah. on this okay. One. okay. Okay. So I had Klein. Yes. Berkland. Yes. Smaller. Yes. Walling. Yes. Shot. Yes. Okay. Now <laughs> Now, okay. go now go to I. Thank you. Resolution approving economic development loan agreement with the Nudgers Kearns Managers LLC. With the City Council authorizing the loan guarantee for Nudgers Kearns Managers LLC, it is necessary to enter into an economic development loan agreement. The agreement shall set terms and conditions of the guarantee and establish remedies in the unlikely case that there would be issues with loan default. The agreement would allow the city to establish a second mortgage on the property at 1314 Second Street and allow the city to take possession of the property should it become necessary for the loan guarantee to be utilized. I make a motion that we pass the resolution approving the economic development loan agreement with the Nudgers Currents Managers LLC. I will second that. So as uh... Mayor Pro Tem shot so eloquently described. This is purely to basically set a second mortgage on the property. In previous um, guarantees, we've never had any um, security of any kind for the city. Um, so now with different bond counsel at Dorsey and Whitney with Bob's passing, um, it was recommended that we have this guarantee agreement that just kind of sets out some stipulations, allows us to have that second mortgage. Um, if it does become necessary that we have to pay that 350, um, then the property would then become uh, the city's. And we would be able to, if we wanted to, we would be able to uh, take possession. Um, and then there's just some annual financial reporting as well. So. So in the past, we never had any security. 
Correct. So, and that's kind of what I've gone through in the last six months is realizing if we would have to pay the 350, that's just gone. And we have no basically right of redemption to any asset. So that's what this document uh, puts in place. So purely just safety and a backstop for the city and taxpayers. Makes sense. And uh, that just came out this afternoon. I emailed it out to everybody. I don't know if anybody, if everybody had a chance to read it. Mm -hmm. I also printed it and promptly left all of the copies on the printer at City Hall. <laughs> yeah. So there's a copy for everybody at City Hall. You have to come up and talk to us and get your copy. <laughs> read it. Walling? Yes. Smaller? Yes. Berkeley? Yes. Shot? Yes. Fine? Yes. Okay, new business. Resolution approving a consulting agreement with True North Companies LL, True North Companies LC per resolution 090622K. The city withdrew from the Intergovernmental Action Agreement for which provided the safety group Central Iowa South, SGCIS. This will withdrawal will take effect July 1st, 2023. Therefore, a new safety management process needs to be put into place. Staff has held discussions with Brad Bankston and True North Companies on a consulting agreement to handle the general safety and loss control policies, procedures, and compliance. Consulting fees per the agreement would be $150 per hour plus mileage, which is currently estimated at 72 hours for a total of $10,800 plus mileage. If approved, this new agreement will save approximately one third of the costs that were spent with the SGCIS and will provide for a much more personal service with True North, providing a dedicated safety consultant to assist us. The Perry Safety Committee and City of Perry have a great relationship with True North and feels this will be an excellent move towards enhancing and protecting the safety of all city employees. Make a motion with pass resolution approving a consulting agreement with True North Companies, LC. And I'll second that. Yeah, so this was um, something that we've kind of been in the works for quite a, a little while, um, is, is we've been with um, IAMU for several years, so it just kind of felt like we really wanted to switch. I think it was getting kind of uh, complacent on some of the stuff. So um, Brad Bankston comes to all of our meetings, safety meetings that we have uh, once a month. He's been great. Um, they have a new safety uh, coordinator uh, from Des Moines. Uh, it's been in the, he's been in the industry for 20 years. That's what he's done. Um, so we're working together on that. The other thing is, so they'll be doing some teaching on different classes, um, just different things. And then we're also going to utilize a, a free online thing through our work comp called Learn, where there's literally like 300 classes that anyone can go on and take. Uh, we're in the process right now of signing everyone up and kind of creating that, uh, that framework. So that way everything's kind of ready to go around July. The other thing is um, with this amount, it is about a third less um, than what we're currently paying but I should also know that the water department will pay 25% of that too. So you can deduct that off of there. They pay 25% to, to come to our um, safety stuff too. So uh, it, it'll be a really good program. I think everyone's, it passed unanimously in the, in the safety committee. So I think everybody's really excited. So. Okay. Mahler? Yes. Berkeley? Yes. Wally? Yes. Shots? Yes. Fine. Yes. Okay, item B, resolution approving a professional services agreement with Bolton and Mink for the downtown improvements, phase one. Bolton and Mink has submitted a professional services agreement for the downtown improvements, phase one. This agreement would provide services for the project with a scope of work to include project initiation and management, public involvement and stakeholder input, data collection, basement investigations, geotechnical investigations, environmental contaminated sites review, stormwater analysis, preliminary design, final design, and bidding phase. 
The professional services agreement would be for a cost not to exceed $618,746 without prior approval per the 2023 Bolton and Mink rate schedule. Discussion? Proposal? Motion. Motion. Thank you. I was looking for the word. <laughs> I make a motion we pass a resolution approving a professional services agreement with Bolton and Mink for the downtown improvements to page one. I'll second that. Pretty expensive. Great. It is. It's all uh, in proportion of the project. So this project is the, we call it the Wells Fargo Alley, um, the parking lot at First and Willis. Warford from First to Third Street, and then Second Street from Willis to Warford. So four blocks, a block of alley, and a parking lot. So um, definitely a lot of work, and it always gets much more, uh, I would say, intricate and detailed when dealing with uh, the close quarters in the downtown area. So and a lot of utilities. Lots of utilities, not a lot of space. So, so in that we're talking about utilities, is there any chance of those utilities going underground in those areas, some of them or not? Is that, and I didn't. Um, so you met with a lion and I was not. I'm not the pictures look pretty. I didn't know. Yeah. Utility. Yeah. Yeah. The pictures look really busy. We're talking about the alley. Yeah. Um, we did. Oh, yeah. Um, we, we did talk with the line about some possibilities and we can find some of those options as we get into design a little bit. Uh, we talked about shifting some of those poles around. Uh, honestly, there's some costs that come with some of that that we did not take into account as part of this process. Um, honestly, until we start getting into some design, I can't fully answer the question whether they could go on the ground. Uh, again, it's just something that comes with some costs when you do those kind of things. We're, we've got there's there's some pieces of it they thought could go some pieces of it they thought couldn't uh, a lot of the services they thought could get cleaned up um, one of the things they did talk about while we were walking through there was like there are several services that are no longer used and so it would they could clean up some of those just by decluttering a little bit so those are the pieces we've worked through as part of the design uh, and then, honestly, part of that might come into play as well with the EV charging, uh, because we'd have to put a transformer in there, which is actually part of the cost of the EV charging project. That's a match. So, so like Sven said, these are these are really they kind of get really nasty. You find a lot of things buried underground. You find the old basements. You find coal shoots. I mean, there's there's all sorts of things you uncover uh, that get pretty time consuming. What's the what's the time so, for design or for yeah, construction? Design. So we're at this point we're looking at a, a mid winter uh, a bid for the project. It might be January February time frame uh, for that. It does again they're pretty intricate, so it takes a lot of time, um, and we, we've got to get moving on it to be able to hit that that deadline. But we've got to basically get into every building. Uh, we've got a structural on the team that'll help us look at if there's anything protruding out under the road. Is it structurally safe? Can we leave it? Uh, do we have oh, modification yeah. of those things? So yeah, they get very interesting. We, we find some sure. strange things. I think that was not interesting. <laughs> <laughs> with, our, with the steam way that used to run, I'm sure the nurse is just as oh, yeah. Um, yeah. 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 I guess, yeah. Yeah. It's not sure. It's a yeah, and we, we're well aware there's a steam tunnel right there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I'm sure there's still coal chutes and elevators and everything under all the sidewalks. So, well, and part of this is, is it's stormwater quality funding that from the wastewater treatment plant that's helping fund the project. And so, as part of that, we look at percolation, all those kind of things. We have to make sure we're not causing any, any issues with some of the downtown buildings, bringing water where there isn't currently those kind of things. So. Matt, I, I've got a question. I've heard there's a four foot crawl space down through the center of that for 618,000. Are you going to crawl down that? <laughs> I don't go into fine spaces. Well. <laughs> Only if you're the one that greases them up. I was just. <laughs> 
I was just going to say, we always take somebody from the city with us when we go, would you like to come along? <laughs> go for it, dude. Wally? Yes. Wally? Yes. Berglund? Yes. 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 The item C, resolution approving a professional services agreement with Bolton and Mink for the Willis Avenue overlay. Bolton and Mink has submitted a professional services agreement for the Willis Avenue overlay. This agreement would provide services for the project with a scope of work to include client coordination and project management, data collection, design, public involvement, environmental approvals, bidding phase services, and construction services for a mill and overlay from West 3rd Street to 17th Street. The professional services agreement would be for a cost not to exceed $124,100 without prior approval per the 2023 Bolton and Mink rate schedule. Make a motion to approve resolution approving professional services agreement with Bolton and Mink for the Willis Avenue overlay. I'll second that. Any discussion? Needs to do it. That's going to be a really transformative project for us, I think, and really spruce up that main drag of the community. So we're really excited about that. And I do, I have to brag a little bit. Um, the downtown project and the Willis project are both utilizing the data from the scan project we did with both, which yes. I know on uh, the downtown project, was a, a little bit of savings. So we're excited about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yay. That's great. Mahler? Yes. Fine. Yes. Berkland? Yes. Wally? Yes. Shot? Yes. Item D, resolution approving a professional services agreement with Bolton and Mink for a 2024 street repairs, HMA rehabilitation. Bolton and Mink has submitted a professional services agreement for the 2024 street repairs, HMA rehabilitation. This agreement would provide services for the project with a scope of work to include project initiation, project development and design, bid letting phase and construction services. The professional services agreement would be for a cost not to exceed $126,100 without prior approval for the 2023 Bolton and Mink rate schedule. I make a motion to pass a resolution approving the professional services agreement with Bolton and Mink for the 2024 street repairs, HMA rehabilitation. I'll second that. Discussion? Kind of the same thing. It's going to be with these last three items, it's going to be a busy 18 months for us. So. Item E, resolution authorizing severance pay for police dispatch employees. Mm -hmm. Due to aging equipment and changes in technology requirements, the Dallas County Sheriff's Department will assume dispatch duties for the City of Perry Police Department and Perry Volunteer Fire Department as of July 1st, 2023. Four full-time dispatchers will be laid off with their last day of employment being June 30th, 2023. Police Chief Eric Vaughn and administration have met and wishes to provide severance in the amount of $5,000 for each of the four dispatchers, as well as an additional $1,000 if the dispatcher stays employed through June 30th, 2023. This resolution would approve such severance and authorize the use of the termination of employment and release agreement to be given to the four dispatchers, which will need signed within 21 days in order to receive the severance. Make a motion to pass a resolution authorizing severance pay for police dispatch employees. I'll second that. Discussion? 
We have Chief Vaughn here. I guess we should just kind of take questions. I guess it's kind of self-explanatory, uh, but we're really hoping to, uh, you know, hold on to the dispatchers uh, until the end of this month, uh, so we can uh, help with our transition uh, at the first of July. Um, we just want to. Uh, we're hoping to incentivize them to stay here, um, so we still start having problems with staffing. Uh, during this transition during this month uh, and just kind of thank them for their their service and help them uh, move on from our employment here and uh, get started somewhere else. And this is a little late, 25 days out from the date of their final day of employment, but um, I guess for the good side or the bright side, we've never had to do a layoff before. Uh, so we really had to start from scratch with all this and uh, kind of have discussions and work it out and then have discussions with uh, our employment attorney as well to come up with that agreement. So um, unfortunately, um, we are going through this, but uh, Fortunately, we've never had to do this before. Whenever we've, uh, you know, had cuts in employment, we were always able to do that through attrition and retirements, things like that. So um, this is definitely a new experience for all of us. Yep. Caller? Yes. Swally? Yes. Berkeley? Yes. Shot? Yes. Fine. Yes. Item F, resolution approving a position and job description for a records clerk. Due to the upcoming changes within the Prairie Police Department and the elimination of dispatch, it is necessary to create a job description for a records clerk to maintain and manage all records for the Prairie Police Department. This resolution would approve such job description for the records clerk position, which will commence July 1st, 2023. And with the wage being set with approval of the fiscal year 2024 wage resolution for a range based on longevity between 2439 to 2675 an hour. Make a motion that we pass the resolution approving a position and job description for the records. I'll second. Discussion, Eric. Yeah, so uh, this position is just being created. It'll be filled by uh, Lori Riley, our communications uh, director at this time. Um, basically, it's it's kind of a name change for her. She's going to be doing a lot of the same duties that she already does, as far as uh, maintaining our records management system for our police for our police department, as well as distributing. Um, copies of records, not only to the public, but to the county attorney and to other agencies we work with on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, she helps a lot in that job description. You'll see uh, she helps maintain a lot of our uh, computer systems and that type of thing that we work uh, with on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, so it's just kind of a, a new description for her duties. Um, the next one you'll see is the assistant records clerk, which uh, will be filled by Anna Jimenez, um, and it just kind of she will doing doing similar work um, that she's doing right now too. I've, I've got a question. We're kind of referring to the next one. Is there enough work for two people to be working on and doing that? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> More than enough. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's a, there's a lot of work that's uh, uh, especially now um, not only copying you know paper files and computerized files but videos and searching for those and getting them to the people. Um, especially the county attorney and the defense attorneys um, is a pretty big job in maintaining some of those uh, systems when we do have issues with them. Uh, and then Anna's going to be helping do that somewhat, plus answering the administration lines during the day and handling the walk-in traffic also. So, yeah. Great. Thank you. Okay. Yes. Klein. Yes. Berkland. Yes. 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 Item G resolution approving a position and job description for an assistant records clerk. 
due to the upcoming changes within the Perry Police Department and the elimination of dispatch, it is necessary to create a job description for an assistant records clerk to assist the records clerk in maintaining and managing all records for the Perry Police Department. This resolution would approve such a job description such job description for the assistant records clerk position, which will commence July 1st, 2023, and with the wage being set with approval of the fiscal year 2024 wage resolution for a range based on longevity between $19.45 and $25 to $25.25 an hour. Make the motion to pass resolution approving the position and job description for an assistant. I'll second. Well, I kind of <laughs> covered it before. So. All right, Berkeley? Yes. Fine. Yes. Smaller? Yes. Smaller? Yes. Shot? Yes. Okay, item H resolution approving the readdressing of a parcel within the city of Perry. The owner of 1819 Third Street has demolished the former structure and is building a new duplex. During this time, they inquired whether they could request an address change in hopes of alleviating mail issues with a similarly addressed properties on West Third Street. While the city cannot guarantee that heirs with the post office will cease, staff research did discover that a certain address number could fit with this property while still following the address pattern in the district. This action would change the listed address from 1819 to 1821, with 1825 to be the number for the second unit. Exhibits were attached to the resolution to describe the number. I make a motion to pass a resolution approving the readdressing of a parcel within the city of Perry. I'll second. Save that for mailman. Actually, the biggest thing was I didn't want to have any confusion if a 911 call went out. Yeah, mm. sure. Any duplication between West Third and Third. Yeah, and, and like the summary said, uh, we were able to identify addresses that would be assigned to that double parcel anyway. So there's really not really much of an issue in the change here. Safer all the way around. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's right. <laughs> they don't go up there. <laughs> All right, Mahler? Yes. Fine. Yes. Berkeley? Yes. Walling? Abstain. And Shot? Yes. And may I also ask for a round of applause for Daniel for his last official presentation? <laughs> Thank Good you. luck to you. Yeah, I pestered him about this. To get it done before he left. <laughs> to get it done before he left. <laughs> Have you bought the bullet yet? Not yet. Boot. Boot. Bullet. <laughs> Motion to adjourn. Or do I just say it's adjourned? Just say adjourned. Okay. At We're done. Seven We're done. <laughs> Seven twelve. Seven twelve. Thank you. Twelve. <laughs> Holy smoke, I know why John was oh, That was okay. That yeah, was a lot of, nicer. A lot of meeting. Yeah, the, 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 the,